Hey everyone, Justin Brawl here, and I know it was a little bit two days late since the episode premiered. Episode 23 of Food Wars, second episode of Food Wars, third plate. Episode 30 came out by on Sunday, as I think you can take a break from videos because it was Father's Day on Sunday. So I'm going to go celebrate at my dad and my brother's house. So well, I didn't get home until pretty much very much late because of freaking heavy traffic. That Sunday night, Monday I probably could have done it Monday, but a lot of things that had, a lot of things happened soon. It was like. You know, it's the only just take a one day break for myself again. Sunday was the hot, Sunday was the important Father's Day celebration. You have to, it was Father's Day Sunday, so I had no ex that's not true excuse. Monday was just like basically a me day for me. So I have Food Wars basically hold back release for two days until until now. Well, my hero, I haven't, been, I haven't done two chapters of my hero recently, so I'll probably do a double header for that probably tomorrow. And Boruto will still be updated on Thursdays. But either way, right now, we have a mic that's untold in the future. Lots of that's then. This is now. Food Wars Episode 23. Bearing the Pulsar Dormitory. It wouldn't be more Bearing some Bearing the Pulsar Dormitory. Just to say, like, he's bearing something. Not like just bearing, bearing Polar to start. It sounds a little weird, bud. This is the episode we fished. This is the episode mostly colonies between the second match of the, the second match of the first bout. Between Isuki and Shirotosu. Where they both have, both have eel dishes and they both have they both eel dishes as the main ingredient, they both deserving, and they both have to deliver exactly what the judges are. At this point, we, actually, we didn't actually get to see who the judges were just yet, prior to last week's episode. We officially got them introduced now, and so gee, uh, so the time when someone realized, when someone realized this one girl carrying, like, I think it was like four thick books, by herself apparently, and she was getting a little heavy, maybe four or five, I think, I think it was maybe five, I think four or five books. Apparently, Murray. Amari managed to let know that. With a little bit of complete shock and a really like ominous look of like he just witnessed something terrible. He just witnessed something like appears like a godsend all was like a godsend to all cook to all, to all chefs in the cooking world. Is that those books came from the WGO called the World Gourmet Organization, and these people here, or at least the organization as a whole, are the people who gave rankings to every to every restaurant across the world from all, not just from Japan, but from let's say China, Russia. United States, Canada, and the South America, the Central America, every every currently restaurant in the world has a star and star ranking. The top of course in the top rankings the top three stars in the culinary world. Even just getting one star in their in their record books can call what catapult you as a chef to higher standards than you know, you know basically you just made you just made the big leagues and getting at least one star here is like basically a, just the kicking point for that. So it's basically, you know, uh, along with that, they are renowned, the WGO is basically renowned as either both feared and renowned by all chefs in the world because they want to get star recognition from the WGO, but, if they, but they also fear them because if they, don't, if they don't get you a star rating, you're basically nothing to them. You're basically, you're nothing to them, you're just basically wasting your time as a chef. Not exactly to their eyes, not exactly to their words. Because the time when one of the right, one of the judges we managed to gather, they actually got their introductions, Annie, Charmé, and Historie, Anna, or I think it was Annie, Anna, I think it's for, I think, I think we just had an E in the end of it, Annie managed to talk to someone internally, he, she, she knows the shirt that says, you can get a diner, and says, oh, yeah, he, she looked at the books, at least at least one book was clean, you can eat, you can eat, nope. Eventually, those that since that your name's not in the registry and in the books entirely, means that you're not wasting your time as a chef. Basically, you're not all that important. Well, some of your hands just looked at it, it was just like, huh? You know, that just happened. Like looked at it was like basically how someone usually handles like well, buy heavy things in the colony or just like just take it like whatever. And everyone's bearing because does he realize these guys are like basically the higher these are basically the guys who could make or break your culinary career. If you don't even at least get one or something, at least know who they are, you're basically screwed in the culinary world. And when everyone's berating them, Annie, just by saying silence, one person, a little tiny little girl, that girl herself, that small little girl, managed to silence the entire auditorium. Say, I may have, I may have five minutes, she's cute, so I'm like, I'm not the kind of person, she excuses herself. Well, I was just giving like, some, she was like, more, like a, a bit of motivation to someone to do better, or at least in a way. You know, someone clearly realized he, she said, I'm, to make fun of me. So eventually, just because then and they say you want to explain exactly how they're going to do the judging here, it's going to be completely in part here, basically the third party, they have nothing to do with between the few between 
the Rebel Students Essentials is basically being parred, and then they're not letting their um, their geos rankings be. And the thing that you said points about that historic sense to both swear to God and to the book that the judging will be fair here, will be in part. So there's no pulling favorites here, of course. There's nothing pulling any favorites here. And they're all starting the fact that all chefs could strive to do could at least to do good. At least be at least be acknowledged. I may butcher that the whole explanation exactly why the OGO are here. But you need some, but you need a third party set of judges to so be completely fair between both sides, of course. So, do but all to get the people entirely here, the WGO basically the one of the most renowned group, of she, renowned group of people judging these new students, judging these high school students in the Shokugeki. Imagine seeing how much connections that Tutsuki have with the colonial world. It says a lot, and this is a big alliance to having these three people come down here. Now, moving on to the Shokugeki itself, so as you see, the full dish between. Jirotosu and you should keep first up Jirotosu, the new member of the Elite Ten, I forgot what CD he got. He delivers his eel dish with a bit of a, some, it's all chopped up and cubed. Cube slice eels, but it also covered also some sort of tomato sauce. First bite of it, I, both and his story and Charme, both got the typical food chasm, as well as they being, my friend, she got hit with a wave of, new mem- of some sort of fluid. I think you made me. F- Imami fluid of that dish. And the other two got basically bulking muscles. Like, we're talking about like full fledged. We're just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but like, we're seeing full fledged flexing in the muscles, pecs, abs, biceps, everything. And then when Annie gets involved in her sort of final conclusion, she has, I, you know, I was thinking what we're going to, I did not know how they're going to animate this when we get to the anime. But in the manga, of course, you know what I'm talking about. Here we have the scene where she, has, of course, net, normally she's flat chested. Look what she has to be, but she's mostly flat chested. And Kara's supposed to be more conservative with her, with her skin. At least for all I can tell. But, and I don't know what sparked this to happen in her mind, or at least how the creator perceived this, but she had her hands basically imagine, imagination, big, huge tits, clutching both these. Two, I, Feels so weird doing that just now with my body, but she has them. She has both Charmaine and his story right in between the cleave, right in the cleavage, and she is puffing up. I think she's pushing up her tits in the mean like I was expecting at least a one second thing of blackout and him to smack in both Charmaine and Sora from things so pervertedly, but that didn't happen in the anime, it happened in the manga. So I'm a little bit disappointed on that end, but still in the scene, that shot, I'm just like, yeah. Yes, but also I cannot believe that I also got passed. But Food Wars, what would you expect? So Shirotosu delivers this he expect. Most people gonna be a club but then in comes Shitoshi. Before you move on to show you this at one point there was a bit we had a bit of a flashback between Kuni Kuni and Shirotosu. It turns out these two actually happened to and these two happened to know each other prior way before I even got to the Academy. So the fact that they're both, they're both families you have to know each other and it does look with the tradition thing. Well, apparently, Ichiki actually did met with the Kuni Kuni's family, how, let it stay in the house for a bit. So basically, you could, Ichiki looked at it some way as childhood best friends, but Kuni Kuni Senpai looked at it completely differently. Not childhood best friends, he only, only stayed with us just to train, and the base get the introduction between the two of them, exactly how old they were, what they were for. And then move, we didn't see any more flash pictures until after Satoshi get Ichiki Senpai gives him his dish. So basically, Satoshi gives him his di- gives him back his dish. He explains what he's delivering. It turns out he's actually delivering this dish combined with some of the Pulitzer Observatory students, specifically Yukio, Rukio, Shu, Mari, and the other two, I think Daigo and Sango. I think Daigo and S- I forget here, I think those two the two idiots I'm referring to, you pretty know who I'm talking about here. Basically taking all they have in basically what they have in store in the dormitory, throw into their dish. Without even asking permission, but he really has without even asking permission, but he still has high hopes for that. With these ingredients he will hopefully pass. At least able to beat your chosen with this because keep in mind Satoshi is the kind of guy you can say what you want about him, but Say bad mouth in the residence of the dormitory and the dormitory itself, though, he will keep coming at you. He'll take you down a pet. 
Three of them saw from last week's episode the way how it ended when him covered up the eel from when he covered the eel and the way how he looked at Shirotosu. You knew for a fact that Shirotosu fucked up when he messed when he made fun of poor when made fun of the daughter and his residence. Because of this is basically his answering is basically Shirotosu's way of answering back to what Shirotosu just said. <coughs> so basically, we get to see that this it turns out to be mixed match with some other things from smoke. My house, some of the ingredients were done by Smug and Nisa Shun and his two friends. And the two friends I'm referring to here, Shun, I forgot about the name, it's the one's Daigo. I think the other one's name is <coughs> Shuno Sungo. I forgot the other guy's name. I know one that's Daigo, I forgot the other guy's name. Cooked through smoke, there was also a com- combination of cheese and along with the rice juice. So eventually, all that was presented to the board of risotto. But the way you have the dish was presented, you had to add a few things. This is a commercial Japanese dish. Basically, you have this like you have what's in front of you, but you also got to take something out by adding some more condiments and whatnot, and cover the dish with some sort of broth or it's a green tea, to just kind of make it like somewhere like an udon or the way. I think that's the case. I think okay, not udon, but you know, like, first of all, Japanese udon, who knows Japanese culinary foods? You should know what I'm talking about. At least from what the anime was going on about, but I didn't know about that. Actually, I should point out. Anyway, I'm moving on for I'm missing on this up here. Moving on. So he explains exactly what exactly what he was putting in the dishes. And the way how he presented these dishes, he did like such a good look like this. It's like I'm doing this for the stone he's like pink, sparkly back right in front of him. And so it's the most flamboy pose I have seen him deliver. While those three are just looking at him like, why are you telling them? Don't just tell like he explains the fact that soon smoking Smoke wooden. His smoking ideas were coming into play to this dish while the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears of two who do the man, hope to do the manual labor. What else I had into the dish? But when Rikyo saw that you needed a, a pro type rice juice that wasn't completely made into this dish, she got pretty mad at him. Very mad. Was like, I could hear like pound, like really mm, eerie, like almost like sound, like. This is kind of like when a Japanese an anime girl looks at looks at a guy or just another friend would look at like complete anger at them, but even saying a word, but even saying a word just for that little sound effect. So that like, Rokio did soon uh, she told you something that Rokio that he should not have done. At least was asking permission, even with permission, probably said no because that rice was still in the prototype stages. But he delivered everything that was he delivered he delivered the dish, what was given to him with the ingredients. And somehow he managed just to get the win here. I just said, well, I kind of spoiled the winning here, but before I get to how he, I forget to, to the victory here, the way how, they, the, way how the judges were game, the, for taking the first part of the dish, and he was wrapped around the eel, saying, it's torso, but it's delicious, while the other two were also getting infected the same way. And eventually, these two, eventually all three of them decided to get the win to Satoshi, and while Satoshi gives the, he also gets the dish to Shirotosu, but the way how he uses this is too, is like, if you take a bite of this and actually enjoy it, and you say it's delicious, I want you to apologize for what you said about the Dorn but he kept, but the way he said it, he kept egging him on to tell he, to say he's sorry for what he said. Takes the first bite, he came, he came himself a continue scoffing down the plane, finishes it, and he's told you to keep asking, you know, you're gonna keep saying, you're gonna say, say you're sorry, say you're sorry, so you say about the dormitory, eventually he was like breaking, Closed, ripped off, and eventually he apologizes for what he said in Italian. I'm not going to say the words in Italian because I'm not going to put you the Italian language, but translation to that, what he said was saying, I am sorry, and so she got the win. Everyone's in celebrating, most of the roses ever long, so we're, get, we're giving up thumbs up to everyone for Satoshi for winning. Even the Postal Roses are also giving thumbs up to all of the ones who are not the non residents. We're also cheering them because they're both part of the Royal Students Alliance. So that's one win for the Rebel students. And you know the fact that he got one loss, Kuni Kuni, towards the end of the episode. Because, yeah, just because you got one win here doesn't mean that you got one here. It doesn't mean you're going to win the rest of the battle. She ultimately claims the fact she boldly claims that we're going to see she's going to see Satoshi in the second round. And even though Satoshi kind of was not a not serious answer, but he also explained that you're the 16th, not the 17th. So it was like, I think the response was like, you know why you there is direction is a reason why you're the, I'm one seat higher below above you. You're one seat below me is because he's never taking anything too seriously. 
you can see the final moments of the flashback. It turns out the reason that she had the reason she says that is because when time when Satoshi comes into the Kuni Kuni household, she's injured to do he can see a flu apparently. She explains what it's called the dragon flu. It takes a while, it takes like it takes some time to get it to come out for sound, but when Satoshi takes the flu to his mouth, eventually somebody I don't know how he did it. <coughs> but to surprise the Kuni at least the disgust of the Kuni Kuni, he did all he mastered it so easily. He actually put it into his mouth. Blow on, blow on the flute, and ultimately start playing some music notes. It also explains that ever since you got me, ever since you came into the household, you do it. Everything that I've been doing that took me years to, that took me a while to master. You master perfectly with a look on your face that you think you you're not even trying hard. I repeat that again. You're doing all these things without without having a look that you're even struggling, and this is way too easy for you. Being that he, he had no he had no idea what. What well, what was he doing to her? That may at least say he had no idea what she was feeling when she saw that the Satoshi was mastering all these skills that took him at least a few months or these years to master, and he's doing his completely false on the first try, without even without even showing any form of struggle in his face. So Kuni Kuni resents him for that, and she boldly claims that we're going to see her in the second round as I crush you against Soma, but. So Toshi comes back and saying, yeah, I don't think you think so high, don't think too fast is there because you're going to get crushed by a chef named Suga Soma. Say that Toshi still has high hopes for Soma to beat Kuni Kuni in this first, in the first battle. And right when he's finished saying that, she turns over to Soma and turns on Soma by this huge, big, this big, huge pan. I think it was called a cooking wook, I think it was called. Eventually, he actually bought that one, of course, in War and Flames. He took the, the 8.2 ratio soba noodles and actually dumped it into the pot. He's stir facing he is stir frying these soba noodles. While Kuni Kuni looks in complete shock and looks like a complete shock that he's ruining this the 8 to one ratio. She simply claims the fact that she's going to crush Soma and all the hopes that came with Shitoshi having high hopes for Soma. For those who read the manga, we all know exactly what happens here, but not even spoke for any other watchers. And from next week's episode, it looks like we're close to the final stop. So I'm guessing 25 episodes in time we're in the season, we're going to take a break. So it's like in 25 episodes in total, we're going to get from this. And we're going to get to potentially get season 4 coming later on the line. <coughs> but that's the case for this So this episode would near to hand deliver a lot in terms of how the park is between you get the first week for the Rebels. We still have to wait for the results of Sombert's Kuni Kuni Senpai. We gotta wait till likes it for both Soma versus Kuni Kuni Senpai and Mikashima versus the, the Yoon looking girl from the first card. I may have forgot her name entirely, but I call it King of all these names. She's kind of has I even forgot one half of those idiot three of the idiot duo from the polls or the other students because I'm bad these characters. I'm bad memorizing characters. All well, these names wise. So that's the end of Food Wars here. It looks like. So you know, we only really got the first win here. So just think for that she's gonna lose, crush, she's gonna be crushed by Soma. And hopefully we get to see, hopefully that comes out. Also, we're gonna have two more episodes left of the season. Since we're close to the final we're close to the final stop here. So until then, leave a like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend, and I'll see you next time for the next video. Laters, and I've been going on this for like almost 19 minutes. Again, see ya.